life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. I came so you can have life more abundant, life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. Spirit of the Lord is flowing through me, proclaiming the good news to all in me. Welcome to Z Church. Pastor will be teaching the greatest principle substitution and identification. So sit back and tune your ear to hear. Prepare your elements. We will be having communion following the message. Prayer requests can go into chat or comments. Don't hesitate. We really truly do want to bless you with the miracle power of God. And join us for Afterglow. You're going to have a great time. Bob, will you pray today? All right. Thank you, Christine. What an honor. Our Lord, our God, our Savior, we praise you today. We declare you, Jesus. You are Lord over us and head of the church that is assembled here together today in Z Church as the members of your body. We invite you to come in and indwell and inhabit this, your body in the earth. We invite you to do today in our midst by your spirit every work that you want to do that we can't imagine to ask or think by your power that dwells in us and is at work in us. We expect you today. We believe you today. We believe you anoint our ministers today and give daily bread today for for all that come to Z Church in their journey to receive from you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joseph, for leading us in worship. Thank you, Bob. We know Jesus was the lamb who was slain, substituted his life for us. Listen. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on. Who 
Jesus, your name is power. Breath and living water. Such a marvelous mystery. Oh, holy, holy, holy is the Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Joseph, what a beautiful song. I agree with you. I wouldn't be surprised if we're singing that when we enter heaven. Pretty Amen. Fast. A beautiful song. Praise God. What a great day in God. A wonderful day. I am really excited. Pre-service prayer. Wonderful. Amen. Word of the Lord came forth. Powerful prayers. I can tell Z team, you're all ready, right? Praise God. Give me an amen. 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 And again, <laughs> you're all ready, right? Yes, Amen. Amen. <laughs> even slower the second time. <laughs> Amen. Well, uh, I'm very excited about the service. We're always excited to be together with our amazing Z team, and they are always ready, they are always prayed up and ready for the service they and ready really for are. The, anything that comes and they're doing that so we can bless everyone yes who watches and listens online through youtube live facebook live or recorded messages ptvn anywhere you may pick up z church there's people behind this broadcast making it happen and they're called the z, z team, team family Please. Bless. <laughs> yeah, I like it when everybody talks about it. Yes. That's fun. In fact, Z Team, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Oh, praise God. God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I have to tell you, some of our families back, they've been uh, just selling the world or traveling oh, yeah. the world. So I heard. Javier's voice, and so I know his beautiful wife, Ana Maria, is he right is next to him, and so, it's so, so let's just say welcome back to our family. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> it's good that when the eagles gather, <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. Well, uh, we want to greet all of our friends who are watching online. You're very important to us, and if you have a prayer re request of any kind, we pray live during the service. So put your uh, prayer request in the chat, the uh, comments section, and someone will pass that to us and we will pray live on the air for you so that you can get a, a miracle. And also we want to tell our friends that we are live uh, every Sunday with the Miracle Hour, a very sp special time when we talk about miracles and inspire faith for you to receive a miracle. What time on uh, this would oh, be Central this, European time? Yeah, we're on Central European time. So, and so it's a 10 p.m. hour time. 10 o'clock p.m. Central European time. 9 o'clock uh, p.m. Uh, Greenwich Mean Time. 
And, and uh, uh, then you have to count backwards. Uh, up forward. So yeah, whatever. that'd be noon in California. So uh, go online. Uh, I tell you, I can't keep up with daylight savings and all. Praise that. God. It's time zone. Thank God. But what you? She yes. Me, she keeps me on track. Oh, uh, she's. I'm just amazing. We have such an amazing team. And Pastor Sharon, our co-pastor, she even does the newsletters. Yeah. So if you are enjoying our newsletters, we have Pastor Sharon to thank for that. Pastor, I'm not going to. Amen. Take more. Amen. Um, I'm not going to take any more of your time because you have a great message to share today. Well, I just want to say one thing to you. I like the look. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. My look. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what does a girl have to do to get a compliment I know, I around have here? To, you have to kind of beg for it sometimes. But no, you really do look good. Thank you. No, thank you to all. Bless you, all Pastor. Right, don't go far. Well, okay, we're going to jump right into the message. I have a powerful message for you today, and it's called the most powerful principle that you'll ever know. It's the principle of identification and substitution. Now, you could say it the other way, substitution and identification with Christ. This is one of the in him principles that we need to get a hold of as new believers and as mature believers, we never want to forget who we are in Christ, Amen. what we have in Christ, and what we can do through our divine union with Christ. I'm going to pray for you, so get ready. Z-Team, lift your hands wherever you are. If you're not driving a car or flying an airplane or riding a bike, Amen. lift your hands. Thank Father, you. we thank you in Jesus' name for everyone who's watching, listening, receiving, and achieving what you have for us today. Nothing less than a complete revelation of the wonderful principle of being identified with Christ in his substitutionary sacrifice, in his death, burial, and resurrection. Father, thank you for anointing me to stand in the office you've called me to and to minister your word by the help of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> amen. 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 Give him another hand clap. I'm into, I'm, into, I'm into hand clapping today. <laughs> you know, little children, people ask, why do we clap in church? Well, the Bible says, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God. And we clap and shout. I believe heaven is a noisy place. <laughs> you know, there are multitudes in heaven that are praising God and shouting Hosanna to God. And if you don't like noise in church, you're not going to be real comfortable in heaven. Well, you'll learn how to like it by the time you get to heaven, because that's what we do. And clapping is one of the, uh, one of the basic emotions that we have or expressions of happiness. Children, when they come into this world, if you watch little infants, they don't have to be told how to clap. When they're happy, it's automatic for them to clap their hands. So yes. it's okay for you to clap your hands. And listen, Z Church, uh, Z Team, it's all right for you to, to shout and give God glory anytime during this service. Remember, your pastor is Pentecostal. Oh, yeah. Amen. There you go. And he likes to he likes to get some feedback. All right, let's begin. I'm not going to give you a lot of scripture today, but I do have some important comments to make about this message, the powerful principle of substitution and identification, right? Yes. Um, I want to ask you a question about uh, your identity. Who do you identify with? If I want to use proper grammar, with whom do you identify? Is it with your political party? Some people, that's their complete identity. Uh, being able to represent their political party. That's where they get their identity. And there's not much else. I mean, if it weren't for their um, politics, they wouldn't have much uh, much of an identity. Personally, people, people like to join things. They join a motorcycle gang for identity, and they identify with, you know, other gang members and wear the, the patch on the back and the leather jacket and drive the same motorcycle and hang out at the same places. People seek identification. Some people identify with their sports teams. And let me tell you something, they can get pretty wild in their identification with sports teams. In fact, uh, a lot of times there can be a, a riot when it comes to very important games. And when two teams clash, the fans start clashing. And uh, so identification is a very powerful thing. Do you yes. identify as rich? Do you identify as poor? Yes. Do you identify as 
educated? Do you identify as lonely? Do you identify as a winner? What is your identification today? And of course, we know where this is going, where I'm taking this message. And that is, we get our identif identification through Christ. I'm not saying it's wrong to be a sports fan or to belong to a country club or, or whatever. But what I am saying is our number one identification is our ident identity in Christ. All right. Amen. Here's here's our text. Thank you, Pastor Loretta. <clears throat> let me get let me get hydrated. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Everyone knows this scripture. You should know this scripture. Surely he, Jesus, the Lamb of God, our Passover Lamb, has borne our griefs. That means he carried our griefs and he carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. You know, when, when we see a picture of Christ on the, on the cross and the picture that's painted in the Bible of the crucified Jesus, he appears to be full of sorrow and smitten and afflicted and uh, ravaged with disease and injured and wounded. It's not a pretty sight, but he did that because he carried your sins and my sins to the cross, and he carried our sickness and our poverty and everything that was against us to the cross. I ought to hear an amen there. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Amen. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Let me make that directed towards you. He was wounded for your transgressions. It was your problems, your failures, your sin, and your shortcomings that sent Jesus to the cross. Amen. Yes, he went there for you. If you'd been perfect, he would not have had to sacrifice his life. But we know that we are not perfect. We need Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Jesus willingly yes. and voluntarily went to the cross. Although he dreaded it, he prayed in the garden, Father, if it's possible, let this cup, let this terrible cup of bitterness and death pass from me. Nevertheless, thy will be done. Aren't you glad for that? Nevertheless, hallelujah. Amen. Of course he was Amen. tempted on every hand the way we are yet without sin. He was the perfect Lamb of God. But he became sin. Praise the Lord. Listen to this. I'm going to finish this up. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed or we were healed. You know, Jesus took all of our diseases upon him. I don't know how many diseases there are in the world, but hundreds and hundreds of categories of diseases, every kind, communicable diseases, bacterial infections, viruses. Uh, uh, I, I just don't know, but I do know this, that every disease that's known to humanity went into him. No wonder he was disfigured. No wonder it was difficult to look upon him because it changed him. It marred him. He was no longer uh, the beautiful lamb of God. He became an object of horror. That's what our sins did to him. When all of the sins of the world came on him and were concentrated into him, he bore your sins. He bore your grief. He bore your sorrow. He bore your diseases. Yes. Lift your hands right now and thank God. Thank God for the wonderful substitutionary work of Christ at the cross of Calvary. Praise God. What I'm teaching you today is going to help your theology. A lot of people really don't have a, a simple theology. They have a complicated theology. They're trying to mix some of the old and some of the new. The Bible teaches us very clearly that the old covenant was done away with. It was replaced by the new covenant. We live in a new covenant. Look at it this way. The old covenant has passed away 
the new covenant is here to stay. Praise oh, God. Yeah. You yeah. need to identify as a new covenant believer, a new covenant Christian, and you need to live in the new covenant, and you need to understand the simple but powerful principles of the new covenant, and it all has to do with atonement, yes. being at one with God. Jesus identified with us in our weakness and our sin and our failure so that we can identify with him in his glory, in his joy, in his power. Hallelujah. It's a divine exchange. He had something we needed and he had to give it up for us to get it. Yes. That's called the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Z team knows this very well. They've heard me preach this many times. If you know Brother Larry and Sister Loretta, then you know that we are in him people. Yes. And this is the basis of all of our theology. Yes, it is. The basis of all of our theology is the in him revelation. Yes, yes. The in Christ revelation, the in him truth. Praise God. And if you listen to what I preach, you'll find out that no matter what I'm preaching about, it's always anchored to the revelation of who we are in Christ. Yes. We don't just cherry pick scriptures here and there and try to put together some hybrid doctrine. We go with the truth, nothing but the truth. That's right. All the truth. Amen. Now, I'll tell you why Brother Larry, my Pastor Larry, doesn't preach too much about end times. Seems like Everyone wants to know about the end times. Everybody wants to make a prediction about the end times. Everyone wants to prophesy when it, Jesus is coming and when the end of the age is. And you won't hear me preach about that. You know why? Because I really don't know when Jesus is coming back. I don't have a date for any of that. And I have a hard time putting together eschatological uh, scriptures. Is that a word? Es Anyway, in him it's scripture. It's a word now. It's a word now. In him scriptures. I have a hard time putting that all together. Uh, if you listen to different end time preachers, they all have a different point of view, yet they use the same scriptures. They just they just interpret them differently and kind of daisy chain them together differently to make their point. And they're making a lot of different points and it becomes confusing after a while. You see, when it comes to... Um, apocalyptic books like the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel, they're full of symbolism and they need to be interpreted. My doctrine has no symbolism. <laughs> My doctrine does not need any interpretation. It's literal. It says what it means and it means what it says. You don't have to reinterpret. You are a new creature in Christ. What's oh, mysterious yeah. about that? What's hidden about that? It says what it means, and it means what it says. Praise you God. are complete in him, who's the head of all principality and power. That has no symbolism. It does not need to be interpreted or reinterpreted. Can we agree on that? Yes. Amen. Amen. That he who knew no sin became sin so that we, through his sin, might become the righteousness of God. Praise God. I don't have to reinterpret that for anyone. All I have to do is profess what the Bible says about us, who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, and what we can do through our union with Christ. Amen. I put Glory. together the longest in him, new creation list of in him scriptures that I've ever seen anyone collect. I mean, the Bible is it's the big collection, but I've gone through and, and found hundreds of scriptures that we call in him or in Christ scriptures. And I have about 350, almost 365 in him scriptures. And even though I've been searching through the Bible over and over for years to find these scriptures, uh, sometimes I find a new one that I've overlooked for a long time Praise God. You see, that's where I focus on who I am in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift your hands Amen. up. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. You know, that may seem too simple. I'm into simple things. I'm into the sincere, simple truth of the word. I'm not trying to be 
profound or deep. The word is profound. The word is deep. And I don't have to exaggerate it or embellish it to make it more profound than it already is. Because once you comprehend it, once you get a revelation of it, once you get enlightened, once you see what it's saying and understand what it means, you talk about deep. Wow. Wow. There's nothing deeper. There's nothing higher. There's nothing greater than the discovery of what Jesus did for you when he went to the cross of Calvary, when he carried your sins, sickness, sorrows, and grief, and disease, and poverty, and when he rose up out of the grave brand new, not smelling any sin, not smelling of sin, no paint of sin, no stain of sin, perfect, born again. Jesus was the first one who was ever born again. Yes. Praise God. He was. Yes. And if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for you and me. Amen. Amen. I'm identified Amen. with Christ. Amen. Okay. Scripture number two. Second Corinthians 5.21. God has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus never knew sin until he took our sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. Identification is what Jesus did with us. Yes. When he became sin, he looked at us in our weakness. He looked at us in our pain. He looked at us in our temptation. Yes. He looked at us in our failure and our fear. He looked at us and he identified with us. He had compassion on us. He felt what we felt. He saw what we saw. He thought what we think. Yes. And he so identified with you so completely yes. that he actually took everything in your life into him. Now then, there's two sides to that coin. He identified with us in our sin. Now we identify with him in his glorification, in his resurrection in his victory, Hallelujah. in his power. The Bible says that we should be followers of God as dear children. One translation says imitators of God as dear children. Children identify with their parents. My father used to wear Western clothes. I wonder where I ever got the desire or idea to wear Western clothes. <laughs> Well, I had I had this role model when I was a child. It was my father, and I identified with my father. You and I are supposed to be like children who identify with our father. We need to identify with Jesus. Yes. He's a strong Jesus. Yes. He's a happy Jesus. Yes. He's a compassionate Jesus. He's an obedient Jesus. Yes. He's a glorified Jesus. He's a luminous Jesus. Hallelujah. He's not a failure. No. He's not uh he's not what what would I say insecure? No. He's not confused. He he doesn't he he he's not searching for to find out who he is. He's not looking for himself. He knows who he is. Yes. And you and I need to know who we are in Christ. Yes. Praise Amen. God. Make this your focus. Focus on who you are in Christ. Ask yourself, what would Jesus do in this situation? God. How would Jesus handle this? I'm going through something right now. How would Jesus behave if he were going through what you were going through? Would he pull his hair out and, and start wringing his hands? Oh, what am I going to do? No, he, he never has a day like this of insecurity or not knowing what he's supposed to do or being overwhelmed by unbelief or doubt. No, no, no. He always has confidence in his father. He always knows what to do. He always knows what to say. And you and I need to identify with him and have the same conviction, the same love, and the same compassion that he has. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Time, timekeeper says I have five minutes left. I'm going to take, I plan this ahead of time. I'm going to take a moment. And I'm going to get some feedback from our Z team. I want you to tell me something that Jesus took that we had, that substitutionary part of this principle. He had something 
that we needed. He had to forfeit that before we could inherit it. Now we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He had to have something before he could give it to us. And he had to give it up at the cross, the crossroads, where that great exchange was taking place. And I've already said, he had righteousness, but he became sin so that we could be righteous. You see how that works? Yes. Now, someone volunteers something. What else did he take for us at the cross? Come on, Z team. A sin consciousness. What? A sin consciousness. Sin consciousness. He That's took good. that. Yes. And now we have a righteousness consciousness. Very good, Terry. What else? Someone else volunteers something. Poverty. Poverty, thank you very much. He, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was very rich, 2 Corinthians uh, 8 and 9, yet for our sakes he became poor so that we through his poverty might be rich. You see how people get their theology confused? They don't understand that principle. In their theology, Jesus was always poor. He lived poor. He was just barely above homelessness. In fact, some people think he was homeless. Well, listen, if he gave that up, then we would inherit poverty. Mm -mm. See, if he was poor and he forfeited that poverty at, at Calvary, then what we would get in that exchange is more poverty. But he didn't give up that poverty. He gave up his prosperity. Why did he give up his prosperity? So that we could be rich. Praise God. Someone else give me another one. Fear. Fear. Thank you very much. Do you think Jesus is afraid of anything? No, absolutely not. He was and he has not given us the spirit of timidity again to fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Where do we get our courage from? From Jesus. Where do we get the ability to face something difficult? From Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Let's have two more. He took away I, a barrier. I didn't hear you. A barrier. He took away the barriers. Now the door has opened. The veil has been parted so that we can go straight into the throne room of God. Amen. That's a very good one. One last one. Our grief. Our grief. Thank you. Grief. Yeah, yeah. He he was a happy Jesus. He was anointed with the oil of joy more than his fellow man. His father was well pleased in him. He everywhere he went was a celebration, but he took all this grief and sorrow upon him so that we could have what? The same Peace. joy he had, the same anointing of joy that he had, the, the same rejoicing that he had, the same favor with the Father that he had. Yep, uh, Z team, I believe that you could preach an in him message if you were called upon right Amen. now, because uh -huh. this is what we believe at Z Church. Exactly and this is what you're going to get at Z Church. Right. Um, if you want to hear about the end times, ask somebody else. Pastor Larry doesn't know. I just know that if we if we'll live for him and be ready, he's going to come for us. Amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, Amen. In time. And the Bible says nobody knows when that hour is going to be. So uh, I really doubt that anyone in the world, in fact, I'm convinced that no one in the world knows when the Lord's going to return. So I'm not going to bother myself with this, but I I do know this as a fact that he bore all of your sins, sickness, Hallelujah. sorrows, and grief. Praise God. God. Now, maybe you're listening to me today and you're carrying sorrow in your life. The Bible says, cast your care over on him Praise who cares for you. Maybe you have a great burden on you right now that's just crushing you. Well, you need to let him be your burden bearer. Yes. Maybe sin is bugging you. And you could even be a Christian who's dealing with, with sin and missing the mark. But remember, Jesus was our scapegoat and our sins were put on him. And he took the sin into the wilderness of sin. And those sins stayed there. They didn't come back. Praise God. Praise. Maybe you're dealing with sickness today. Well, he carried your sickness. Yes. He, he bore your diseases in his body. Let me pray for you. Father. For everyone who's watching and listening and hearing this simple message today, I pray that they receive a revelation of identification and substitution with Christ. Yes, Praise God. 
He identified with us in our failure. We identify with him in his victory. You can live a life of victory in Christ, but that's the only place you're going to find it is in Christ. Hallelujah. You're complete in Christ. You come behind in no good gift in Christ. You can do all things through Christ. Well, how do you get in Christ? The Bible says, believe in Christ, Amen. believe into eternal life. And actually, the Greek word there is believe into. He's the door. And we come into Christ and we live in Christ. And he shares all of his benefits with you and with me because we're identified completely with him. Say this prayer with me. Yes. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I believe in Christ. I believe, I believe in, Christ. in Christ. In fact, in fact, in fact I believe in to Christ. I believe, I believe in to in Christ. Christ. I'm coming into Christ. I'm coming, I'm coming into, into Christ. Christ. Into Christ is where I live. Into, into Christ, Christ is, is, where, is I where I live. I live in Him. I, I live, in, live him. in Him. I move in Him. I move, I move in Him. I see the world him. through His eyes. I see, I see the, world the world through His eyes. Through His eyes. I think I see His thoughts. I think His, his thoughts. My victory. His victory. His victory is my victory. His, victory. his, victory. his, victory. his, his life is my life. His life is my life. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. Hallelujah. Message. Praise God. Jesus. Praise God. Now. If you prayed that prayer and something happened to you, something changed, you got a revelation, you, you became a believer at that moment, you were born again, you need to let us know. Write me, Pascal Larry at zchurch.life and let us at Z Team celebrate the blessing that you received. And we want to stay in contact with you and help you with your spiritual journey. Amen. Uh, I believe we can help you. We are called of God and appointed by God to build you up and to help you, praise God, to build faith in your heart. Now, uh, I want to talk to everyone about something very important, and that is uh, something we touched on in this message that we need to underscore, and that is he was rich, but he became poor so that we, through his poverty, might be rich. He didn't do that so we could remain poor. God does not want you to remain a sinner. God does not want you to remain sick, and God does not want you to remain poor. We need to fight sin, we need to fight sickness, and we need to fight poverty. And remember, Jesus went to the cross so that he would be our substitute for sin, sickness, poverty, and spiritual death. God wants you to prosper. I want you to settle that in your heart once and for all. God's will for your life is poverty. He took care of prosperity. It. Prosperity. Thank you, Sister Lerad. I had two thoughts going at one time. God's will for your life is prosperity, not poverty. He went to the cross to take care of the sin problem. <clears throat> he went to the cross to take care of the sickness problem. And he went to the cross to take care of the poverty problem. Praise God. It's the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Prosperity isn't a strange doctrine. It is part of the atonement. It's very fundamental for what Jesus did. Now listen, here's how things are set up in the Bible. We, it's set up on a, on a system of exchange. We give him our sorrow. He gives us his joy. We give him our failed life. He gives us a successful life. We need to give him our, our little that we have so that he can give us his abundance. Praise God. We've come to the time in the service where we will honor God with our tithes and with our offerings. And I want you to search your heart right now and ask the Holy Spirit what would be appropriate for you to do right now to celebrate your own prosperity and to sow a seed for your own harvest of blessings. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for speaking to everyone and giving them a, a knowledge on the inside of what they should do right now in obedience to your law of sowing and reaping. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for your gifts and your tithes. We pray over it, not just today. Pastor and I, we pray daily over your gifts, your donations, and your tithes, because we believe in the Lord of harvest. Now it comes to the point in service where we have a time to pray for your needs. Uh, Terry, do we have any prayer requests? Yes, uh, Marianne is requesting prayer for Casper. Uh, he's scheduled for a large intestine removal surgery. Okay, I'm going to ask Pastor Sharon if she will pray for our Casper. Father, we lift Casper to you. We're so grateful for his life and that he has surrendered his heart to you. And we stand in agreement with him that by the stripes of Jesus, Casper is healed. We command healing into his body to be healed, be whole in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that if he goes forth, uh, that you would give doctors wisdom, that you would cause him to understand and know what your will is in this. And we praise you for it, Lord, for healing in yes. Casper's body in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's Amen. just give God the Lord praise for you, healing. Father. The Bible thank says you for to let our requests Amen. be known unto God with thanksgiving. So we are thanking God that the Lord has healed Casper. Thank you, Pastor Sharon. Terry, do we have any more? That's it for this time, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, Pastor Larry, uh, is there anything else? Let's, let's have communion. Uh, we'll now have communion. Um, Pastor, will you come and join? And who is responsible for communion today? Chris. I am. Chris, I am. Thank you. Bless you, Chris. Okay. It's uh, time for communion. Thank you, uh, Pastor Larry, for that wonderful, wonderful uh, communion message that entire message was a communion message um jesus prayed the prayer of consecration in uh the garden just before he was crucified because he was going to take on a nature that was totally foreign to him um he was unfamiliar with sin and uh sickness poverty and he was going to take upon uh himself our nature so that we could take uh upon ourselves his nature. So I think we can pray that prayer in reverse and say, Heavenly Father, not our, our will, but your will be done. I refuse to stay in for forgiveness. I will not stay in for un for, uh, unforgiveness. I refuse to uh, uh, keep on sinning. I refuse to uh, accept this sickness. I refuse um, the poverty I was born into. Not my will, but your will be done. I refuse what the, what the, what the, what wow. the flesh what Powerful. what the flesh wills so we can pray that prayer in reverse and that's all thanks to jesus for what he has done for us sure. um let's let's t t uh, take the, the bread in your hand please and um first uh, corinthians 11 23 to 26 for i pass on to you what i received from the lord himself on the night when he was betrayed the lord jesus took some bread and gave thanks to god for it then he broke it in pieces and said this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes. Let's take his blood. Praise God. Praise what a Lord. powerful Amen. communion. Amen. Uh, let me say something, Chris. That was so clear and so plain. You said so much with an economy of words. Really? I would be blessed, and I think it would bless people if you would write a short blog and just repeat what you said during this communion service. I want that to be on record. I want people to have access to that. Yeah, I agree, yes, Pastor. Sir. Absolutely. And just the fact that how you put that, you know, not my sins. will, oh, yeah. not my will, but your yep. will be done. Uh, that is just, that was revelatory. That's very good. Praise God. Praise God. Very proud of you. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you. Good, so to, be, good to be pastor of, of uh, people like you and our Z team. Amen, amen. Well, Pastor, 
I'm going to step away because we're toward the end of our service. And again, even if you did not put your prayer request in, if you join us on the Aftergo, our family will pray for you yeah. even then. So praise God. Yeah, we, pray, we pray uh, at a drop of a hat. <laughs> yeah. uh, anytime, Amen. Every time. And um, well, I want to say this before Sister Loretta walks away and before we have our announcements. If you're new to Z Church and you've been watching us for the first time, we're a Bible-believing, spirit-filled online church. And I believe we fit a need in this day and time for people who may not be able to go to church for one reason or another, or may simply just feel more comfortable having church online. And we welcome you. We want to invite you to be a part of our Z Church family. And so write me a letter, Pastor Larry at zchurch.life, and I will welcome you into the family personally, and then you'll be welcome to come online with us if you want to, or if you choose not to, that's all right, but you will be identified with a great church, Z Church. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Pastor. Praise God. Yeah. Go right ahead. Um, no, we... Announcements? Yes, announcement, please. Yes. Well, we encourage you to visit our website, zchurch.life. There you will find the Z Church blog that uh, Pastor was referring to, asking Chris to write a post for. Um, and all of our past services are there also. It's a great place to go and dig up really good treasure. You can also access the Zoom links there for our Zoe group meetings and connect with others. Are you looking for a place to serve the Lord? We have opportunities to serve on the Z team. You can let us know if you're interested by emailing info at zchurch.life. Tomorrow and each Sunday, you'll want to watch Pastor Larry's program, Miracle Hour, at 1 p.m. Pacific time on Praise TV Network. You can see the service live at ptvn.org. We're about to move into the afterglow, and our host today is our elder, Bob Peck. Please join us so you can get to know your church family here at Z Church. If you're on another platform, just go to zchurch.life and click on Join Live. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Hi, Terry Branham here to tell you what I'm grateful for this year, 2023. First of all, I'm blessed to lead prayer at Z Church. We have a wonderful prayer team, and their prayers are very effective. If you need prayer, get a hold of us, zchurch.life. I appreciate all of the Zoe prayers. Someone said at the beginning of this year that this would be the year of the open door, and indeed, it has been. Together at Z Church, we have dug a well in Africa. I never thought I'd have seed there. Who, who would have ever guessed that? But many people now can come and drink clean, fresh water, and I'm so grateful to be a part of that. Another thing God did for us was open a door through a radio station in Iceland, of all places. Can any good thing come out of Iceland? Well, it did, and I'm just so grateful for that. Thankful for our pastors, Larry and Loretta Huggins, leading us in, in these things, and for all of you behind-the-scenes people that do your thing without you. We wouldn't be where we are, and we wouldn't be able to produce what we're producing. The doors wouldn't be open the right way without you. So I want you all to know I appreciate you. I'm looking forward to our online Bible school coming in January, and I hope you'll be a part of it. So happy fall, y'all. Looking forward to great things with you. Be blessed. Mm -hmm.